Hello, everyone. Um, it is my pleasure today to um, welcome the transfer agency team from RBC Investor and Treasury Services um, and congratulate the team on winning late last year, late in 2020, the Transfer Agency of the Year Award um, for our Global Investor Investment Excellence Awards. So what we're going to do today, we're going to talk to the team about um, the service in 2020 and to look ahead into 2021. Um, so we have various members of the team with us today and they will be taking um, questions um, individually. Our first question is for Christoph Kreutzer, who is a director within the shareholder services team. And the question for you, Christoph, what key strides did you make in 2020 to maintain and extend the geographic reach of your transfer agency service? Thank you, Luc and uh, Global Investors for giving me the opportunity to answer this, this question. So in, in 2020, RBC and TS continued to implement changes and enhancements to our existing global operating model to improve clients and investor experience. So three main objectives are driving our target operating model. First is to co-locate function together in the best suitable time zones, allocating capital to offices with the best potential to reduce costs and drive capacity. The second is to expand our ability to service our clients, ensuring efficiencies, flexibilities to our clients over the long term. By streamlining processes across multiple clients groups and entities, we are able to reach this objective. Third, it's important to continuously increase our resilience, ensure continuity of services to our clients in case of service or business disruptions, as highlighted by the current worldwide environment. In 2020, a major achievement I would highlight is the migration completion of shorter services processing activities to our center of excellence in, uh, in Malaysia. RBC NTS Malaysia's processing hub was created in 2008 and is a proven capability, servicing many core processing activities for RBC NTS offices across Europe and Asia Pacific. On top of Malaysia, we are further expanding our European shoulder services operations to include Canada and Ireland in our strategy to continuously optimize our operational centers of excellence around the globe. So the last initiative started in 2020 and is ongoing as we speak. Thank you, Christoph. Um, our next question is for um, Svetlana Saunders, who's a director within the shareholder services team. So Svetlana, could you tell us how did you enhance the digital transfer agency service in 2020? Thank you, Luke. Understanding our clients' needs throughout their digitization journey is fundamental to us. And prioritizing the evolution of digital investor experience is a key strategic pillar of our current and future transfer agency offering. Collaboration with our clients and understanding why a task should be digit digitized to enhance their experience is paramount to ensure that their goals and objectives are met every step of the way. We have continued our significant investment in our digital infrastructure to enhance, to enhance our RBC One portal, providing our clients with greater access to their investor data, dashboard analytics to better understand fund flows and the ability to effectively oversee the service we provide. The pandemic provided the opportunity for us to use our technology and expertise to ensure the clients continue to receive high quality service while we implemented new enhancements. Some example of digital enhancements we made in light of COVID-19 were digital oversight reporting, automated reporting, e-signature tools, digital automatic payments, the implementation of real-time live data dashboards, automated and secure documents exchange, and many more. With digital expectation lab rapidly increasing and continue to this journey, the challenge now is to carry on momentum gained through pandemic and continue to look for ways to digitize the client experience even more. 
Thank you, Svetlana. And our next question is for Bob Chamonet, who is the director and head of client experience within the shareholder services team. Bob, could you talk us through what were some of the key wins and milestones for the RBC transfer agency service in 2020? Of course, thank you, Luke. Uh, in hindsight, uh, while recognizing the obvious impacts on people and the economy, the global pandemic uh, has proven that the RBCTA operating model, which consists in having identical infrastructure, procedures and processes in all operational centers in the three major time zones, provides actually the necessary resiliency and scale to ensure our clients and their investors have not been impacted through the different shutdowns globally. We also moved a large number of our employees, actually the majority of our employees, into a work from home environment, again, without any disruption to service and quality to our clients. And also, as Svetlana mentioned, with regards to digitalization and automation, RBC, in collaboration with its clients, has taken the opportunity to automate a significant number of manual transactions which we received historically from investors. This not only creates efficiency, but also reduces risk and consequently leads to improved investor experience through the reduction of queries. Next to that, we also continue helping asset managers widen their distribution networks across the globe. Through RBC, as a leading offshore TA, with a distribution reach spanning 114 countries and 19 onshore markets, our clients can connect to more than 17,000 distributors. This ensures our clients achieve success and planned expansion for fund structures in global markets. A particular focus is given on the APEC region and the Americas, where our local offices ensure that local investors have a seamless experience. Thank you for that, Bob. So our next question um, goes to Christelle Reichart, who's a director in the product management function within, again, the shareholder services um, team. So Christelle, as we move um, into a new year, into 2021, how would you characterize the competitive landscape within transfer agency services? Thanks, Luke. Well, COVID-19 unfortunately continues to challenge organizations around the world, transfer agents included, and likely will for quite some time. Even if TA are now positioned, are better positioned than at the beginning of the pandemic, they still need to continue to build operational resilience for the uncertain future. This means that automation of the sound processing chain needs to accelerate as well as the digitization of the investor experience. Ensuring the most efficient onboarding process and the most optimal investor journey will be paramount. Providers will compete on the service to be proposed to asset managers in this area. And of course, the transfer agents, that means the digital experience that we can offer to their investors. Financial service firms have been exploring optimal ways of digitizing the account opening experience with clients since before the outbreak of COVID-19. The current crisis has only emphasized the need for more collaboration between TA, asset manager, and platform providers. Distributed ledger technology, while disruptive, reveals to be the technology that will most probably contribute to the transformation and transfer agents willing to champion DLT are only one player in the chain. The widespread adoption of the technology needs the help and support of other industry participants. Again, collaboration is essential. FinTech can and should be embraced as partner rather than viewed as competitors. TA have a card to play. We scale, establish client relationship and credibility build over decades. TA have strength to help them to embrace disruption and influence the future shape of the industry. Thank you, Christelle. And our final question 
is to uh, Fabienne Presser, who's a director within the Shareholder Services Technology team. Fabienne, how will you continue to enhance the transfer agency service in 2021? Thank you, Luke. So as my colleagues have mentioned, we have made quite a few enhancements to our services in 2020. We were able to seamlessly adapt to a virtual environment, which enabled us to accelerate digital efficiencies across the business and set us up for confidently to enter 2021. Our focus in the coming year will be to carry the momentum gained through these efficiencies and continue to look for ways to digitize and enhance the client experience. In the technology group, we will continue to follow our strategy, which is based on three pillars. The first pillar is drive profitability on the business, targeting the removal of manual intervention via automation, digitization, and reinforcing the long-term partnership with our clients. The second pillar is deliver a flexible and resilient architecture through rationalization and modernization of our core systems and leveraging the cloud where applicable. The third is deliver effectively and efficiently with value focus, with upskilling our workforce in areas such as design thinking, agility practices, and the leveraging of new tools to ultimately be quicker. So following these key principles, we will enable us to achieve the art of the possible. Thank you. Fabienne. And thank you also, thank you again to Bob, Svetlana, Christoph, and Christelle um, for their responses. I would just like to say again, congratulations to the team for um, your performance in 2020, for your success um, in winning this award. And uh, given Fabienne's comments and the comments that you've all made about the shape of the business, um, we certainly look forward to hearing more about your successes in 2021. But for now, um, for all of you, thank you very much. Thank you, Luke. Thank you.